heard from my colleagues about uh, some of the attacks on your character, your integrity. I, I haven't heard those, and, and I hope that uh, that we have uh, not you've not experienced that. I also struggle with the change of heart that we're hearing today because I have a list of elected officials who have questioned your investigation, even attacked it. In fact, uh, the former President Clinton said this is a game. In fact, just last Friday, uh, Ms. Wasserman Schultz, Congresswoman Wasserman Schultz, said Secretary Clinton is not the target of this investigation or whatever you want to call it. My question to you today is, do you feel like this has been a Republican witch hunt? This, this, this hearing? No. Okay, thank you. No, for I said at the beginning, I understand people's questions and interests, and I, I, I'm a huge fan of transparency. I think that's what makes our democracy uh, great. And I think it goes to one of the reasons of why you are so respected. To me, to me, this hearing is about understanding and disseminating the facts, how you saw them, and how the American public sees them, and specifically in the areas of where there was wrongdoing admitted under your investigation, where there was obviously breaking the law, but also some cover-ups. Uh, did Congress ask you to pursue this investigation? No, it was a referral from the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community. So it wasn't Republicans either, was it? No. How did you go about collecting the evidence? We used the tools that we normally use in a criminal investigation. Do you, do you did or do you receive a congressional referral for all the information that you collected? Not to my knowledge. Well, then, uh, one of the things that I'm struggling with or that I would like to know specifically is, under oath, Ms. Clinton made these three comments that we now know are untrue uh, in the Benghazi hearing. Number one, she's turned over all her work-related emails. Number two, telling the committee that her attorneys went through every single email. And then finally, and probably the one that continues to stick the most, there was, and I quote, nothing marked classified on my emails, end quote. Now, earlier, uh, when the chairman questioned you about this, you said something about needing a congressional referral recommendation. My question is, something of this magnitude uh, why, or can you help me understand why didn't it rise to your investigation or someone uh, bringing that to your knowledge as far as saying this is a problem, here she is, again, the Secretary Clinton lying under oath specifically about our investigation? We, out of respect for the legislative branch being a separate branch, we do not commence investigations that focus on activities before Congress without Congress asking us to get involved. That's a long-standing practice of the Department of Justice and the FBI. So we don't watch on TV and say we ought to investigate that. You know, Joe Smith said this uh, in front of the, the committee. It requires the committee to say, we think we have an issue here. Would you all take a look at it? But with all due respect, if, if you have the Secretary Clinton, who is under oath speaking about your very investigation, and you've talked about your wonderful staff and certainly have no reason to deny that, why wouldn't that rise to the level of suspicion that here she is saying this under oath? I mean, lying under oath is a crime, is it not? Yes. And what's the penalty on that? Is that that's considered perjury, right? Perjury. It's a felony. I forget the exact. But it's it's a potentially years in prison. But I, I I don't understand. Would you would you help me understand why somebody wouldn't have tipped you off that she's talking about the very specific mm -hmm. case under oath that you're investigating? Well, it's the difference between us being aware of testimony and us opening a criminal investigation for potential perjury. Again, it's not this case in particular, but all cases. We don't do that without. Uh, committee saying we think there was an issue in testimony given in this separate branch of the government. You also mentioned earlier, and it's been quoted several times, that no reasonable prosecutor would move forward with some of the facts. Uh, is there any room at all that somebody would differ a little bit on the opinion? I know that former United States Attorney General Michael Mukasey said uh, with the illegal server, it disqualifies for her from ever holding any federal office. So there are some people of high esteem that may differ, obviously not privy to the exact facts, but, but can you make any room? You said no reasonable person. Do you understand why the American people, or would you understand why other people may say that she has stepped across the line or broke enough law here that you would come to a different conclusion? Sure. I respect different opinions. My only point is, and, and I, I said earlier, I smile because those folks are my friends. I've worked with them for a long time. None of those guys in my position, I believe, knowing what I know, would think about it differently. But I also respect that, that they have a different view from the outside. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Go back. I thank the gentleman. Now recognize the gentleman from California, Mr.